How's it going guys? It's Kyle or the How To Guy 123 here and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to make a Minecraft server for Minecraft version 1.19.2 and this should work for future versions of Minecraft as well. In this video we're not going to be port forwarding or using any sort of VPN software like Hoodmatchy or Redmond VPN to allow your friends to connect to the server. Instead we're going to be using a program called Ngrok which in my opinion is the easiest way to open up your Minecraft server to the internet and will allow your friends to easily connect to your Minecraft server from any computer or internet connection in the world. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So to begin we need to create a new folder anywhere on our computer that's going to contain all of our Minecraft server files. So I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop so I'll just right click, go to new and then folder and we can call this folder whatever we want so I'll just call it Minecraft server. And once you've done that, head to the first link in the description below, and that will bring you to minecraft.net. And this is where we're going to download the Minecraft Java Edition server software. So go down to where it says server software and choose Java Edition server. And then once you're on this page, you'll see a download for Minecraft underscore server 1.19.2.jar, or it could be a newer version of Minecraft if you're watching this tutorial in the future. Just go ahead and click on it and then save the server software to the Minecraft server folder we just created. So mine's on my desktop. So that's where I'll save it and just go ahead and wait for the uh, server software to finish downloading. And once the server software is done downloading, minimize out of your web browser, open up the Minecraft server folder again. And then you'll just see one file here called server.jar. And now if you don't see the .jar extension, that means you might have file name extensions turned off in Windows. And I recommend enabling it just to avoid any confusion. So to enable it in the top of the folder, come up to view and then show and make sure file name extensions is checked. If you're on Windows 10, it might look a little bit different, but it's in the same spot. Just click view at the top of the folder. And then there should be a checkbox up here uh, that you need to check to enable file name extensions. But once you have that enabled, you should see the .jar extension after server. Next, head back to your web browser and on the download page for the server software, you'll see this Java code here. Go ahead and highlight it and copy it. Uh, now head back to the Minecraft server folder, right click, go to new and then text document. You don't need to name the text document anything, just open it up and then paste the Java code in the notepad here. So there's a few changes we need to make to this code. First off, we need to highlight everything from Minecraft all the way just before the .jar here. And we want to rename this to server. So make sure that this says server.jar. We need to make this the name of the server software we just downloaded. So you can see here, the file we downloaded is called server.jar. So make sure that matches up. Next, you'll see the number 1024 in two places. And this is essentially the amount of RAM we're going to be allocating to your Minecraft server. And right now by default, it's set to one gigabyte or 1024 megabytes and you can allocate as much RAM to your Minecraft server as you want, up to half of the amount of RAM you have installed on your computer. So for example, I'm going to head to Windows' Settings, then go to System, and About, and under Installed RAM here, you can see that I have 32GB of RAM installed on my computer. So that means at maximum, I can allocate 16GB of RAM to my Minecraft server. However, 16GB of RAM is quite overkill for a basic Minecraft server. A rule of thumb I tend to follow is to have 1GB of RAM allocated to your server for every 5 players that's going to play on your server. And just as an example for this tutorial, I'm going to allocate 4 gigs of RAM to the server. So we're going to want to take 1024 times that by 4 for 4 gigs of RAM, and that's going to come out to 4096 megabytes. And I'm going to do that in, you're going to want to change that in both places. And the final thing we need to do here, I go to the next line and type in pause in all caps. What the pause actually does is we're going to be opening up a command window to launch our server. And if there's anything wrong with this Java code here, that command window is just going to open, then instantly close. So the pause will keep that command window open and display any error messages. Uh, but anyways, once you have that all sorted out, go to file, save as, and name the file run.bat to run.bat and change save as type to all files. And then click save. And now you can close out the notepad and you can delete the new text document if you would like. So what we actually did there is we created a script to run your server. So if you double click on the run.bat file here, it's going to launch your server. You can see it opened a command window and it's just loading our server here. Uh, you can see here that says you need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server. Press any key to continue, so just hit enter. And that's going to close out of the command window here. Now you'll see a few extra folders and files here in your Minecraft server folder. 
open up eula.txt and change eula equals false to eula equals true. Then go up to file and save and now close out of the notepad and double click on run.bat again to launch your server. Now your server is going to generate a new world and load the spawn point. And depending on how fast your computer is, this might take a few minutes or so. So you know your server is done loading when it says done at the end here. And now our server is up and running. Keep in mind you need to have this command window open every time you want to launch your server. If the command window is not open, your server is not running. So I just went ahead and opened up Minecraft here, and now we can test if we can connect to our own server that's running on our computer. So I'm going to open up Multiply here, I'm going to click Add Server, and we'll just call the server name Test Server, and as the server address, type in Local Host. And Local Host will connect to any server that's running on your computer. So click Done, and you can see our server is up and running, so we can try joining it. And now we are connected to our own Minecraft server that's running on our own computer. If you open up the server console, you should see your username and you can see that you've joined. So now that we have tested out our server, I'm just going to disconnect. Now I'll show you how to configure your server settings. So I'll just minimize out of Minecraft now. Now let's go ahead and stop our server. So to stop your server, you never want to close out of it with the X button here. If you do so, it will not save your world. So to stop your server, type in the stop command in the console here. So just stop and then hit enter and that's going to save your world and safely close your server. Now it says press any key to continue, just hit enter. And now locate the server.properties file in your Minecraft server folder. This file is the configuration file for your server and you can open it in any text editor such as notepad++ or notepad. So I'm just going to right click on it, open with and then notepad. And here are all the settings for your Minecraft server. A few settings to highlight here. You can turn PvP to false if you don't want your friends killing each other. You can change the difficulty to peaceful, normal, or hard. You can increase or decrease the maximum amount of players that can connect to your server at one time with the max player setting. Uh, one setting I want to highlight is online mode equals true. So if your friends play cracked Minecraft or use a cracked launcher such as T-Launcher, you're going to want to change online mode to false to allow them to connect to your server. Online mode will bypass Mojang's authentication servers, allowing those players to join your server. So just as an example here, I'm going to change game mode to uh, creative. And then once you're done changing these settings, go ahead and come up here to file and then save. And then you can close out of the notepad. And make sure that when you're editing the server.properties file that your server isn't running, otherwise you would need to stop your server and start it again for those settings to take effect. Uh, one other thing I want to highlight here is the world folder. Uh, this is your Minecraft world saved here, so if you want to make it back up, you can just take this world and make a copy of it. Additionally, if you want to import another world from like single player, you can just drag it to your Minecraft server folder and rename it world, and that's how you can import a world into your server. So right now at this point, if you were to run your server, only you can connect to your server and none of your friends can actually join your world from any other computer or internet connection. So I'm going to show you how to set that up without any port forwarding or using a VPN software. So head to the second link in the description below and this will be for a software called Ngrok and this will open up your server to the internet without doing any port forwarding. So once you're on this page, go ahead and sign up for an account. And once you've signed up for an account, you actually need to confirm your account. So head to your email and confirm your Ngrok account and then go ahead and log in. So I'll just go ahead and do so. And once you've logged into Ngrok, it's going to look something like this. Make sure you're on the setup and installation tab and click on download for Windows to download Ngrok for Windows. So it's going to save Ngrok in a zipped folder here. Just save the zip folder to your Minecraft server folder and then click save. It's a very small file, so it shouldn't take too long to download. Now head back to your Minecraft server folder, and you're going to need to extract the ngrok zip folder, and you can use whatever extraction program you want to do so. I use WinRAR, so that I'm just going to open the zip in WinRAR, and you'll see one file here called ngrok.exe. Just drag that to your Minecraft server folder, and then you can close out of WinRAR here. And once ngrok.exe is in your Minecraft server folder, double click on it to open it, and you'll see this command window open here. Now head back to the Ngrok dashboard and on the page where you downloaded Ngrok, you'll see a section where it says connect your account. Uh, copy this command here. Uh, at the end of this command here, you'll see an auth token. Do not give this auth token to anybody uh, as they'll be able to run a Minecraft server on your Ngrok account and probably even mess with your existing Minecraft servers. However, if you do need to change your auth token, you can come over here to the sidebar and click your auth token 
and then you can just uh, click reset auth token to get a new authentication token. It's something I'm going to need to do before I upload this video, so don't try and use my auth token. Uh, but anyways, make sure you have this command copied here and then go back to the ngrok command window and paste it in here. You can just right click into the command window here and that will paste the command and uh, just hit enter and it should say auth token saved to configuration file and that means your account is now authenticated. Next, we're going to need to type in this command, which I'll have in the description below. Once again, just right click to paste it in here. So the command is ngrok tcp, which is the protocol we're going to be running our server on. And then you'll see a region here. Right now I have it set to US as I live in Canada. So you're gonna to want to set this to the closest region to you and I'll have them listed on screen now. So for example, if you live in Europe, you can set this to EU. If you live in Australia, set this to AU. But uh, as I mentioned, I'm gonna leave this set to US. And then finally here, you'll see a port, which is 25565, which is the port that Minecraft servers run on. So once you have that all typed in, just hit enter and that will start ngrok. So you can see session status is online. So there's a few downsides to ngrok. The first of which is you need to keep this window open every time you're running your Minecraft server. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to connect to your server. Uh, and then if we come down here to where it says forwarding, this here is the IP address you're going to need to give to your friends to connect to your Minecraft server. So everything from the first number to just before the arrow here is the IP you need to give to your friends to connect to your server. Uh, every time you restart ngrok, this is going to change. So you'll need to give a different IP address to your friends every single time you restart your server or restart ngrok. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to copy this IP address by just having it highlighted and then press Control C to copy the IP address here. We're now going to need to start our Minecraft server again. So double click on run.bat to run it. So make sure that ngrok is running before you start your Minecraft server. Otherwise, you might run into issues. Our Minecraft server is now done running. It says done here. So now let's go back to Minecraft. Let's add a new server. We'll call this ngrok. And then under server address, we'll just paste in the IP address here, click done. And you can now see our Minecraft server is up and running. If your Minecraft server is working at this point, everything has been set up correctly. So let's go ahead and join it. And you can now see we are back on our Minecraft server. And as I mentioned, your friends should be able to join at this point. And one final thing I want to show you guys is how do you set yourself as an op or an operator on your server. So right now, if I try changing my game mode to creative, you see it's not going to let me. Since I'm not an op, I'm not able to use any commands on the server. So to allow yourself to use any command on the server, go back to the console window and then uh, type in the command op and then your username. So in my case, it's ZetaBytes and then hit enter and you can now see server made zettabytes a server operator so now if i try changing my game mode again to uh, creative you can see it worked this time additionally if i try another command like uh, if i give myself i uh, give everybody acacia boat 32 you can see that i just gave myself 32 acacia boats so that pretty much brings us to the end of the tutorial. One final thing I want to clarify though is that in this video, we just made a very basic vanilla Minecraft server. In my previous Minecraft server tutorial videos, a lot of people in the comments were asking me about adding plugins and mods to their server. If you want to add plugins to a server, you need to make a bucket or a spigot server. And if you want to add mods to a server, you need to make a forge server. For the most part, setting those up is a very similar process to what I showed in this video. But if you guys need some extra help, let me know in the comment section below and I can make videos on those topics. Anyways, if this video helped, please leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any additional questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.